I now want to introduce to you this concept of balancing chemical equations. You see, before we can really use chemical equations, we have to balance them. We do this by adding coefficients in front of each formula in the equation until the total number for each atom type is equal on both sides of the equation. Here are some lecture problems I'm going to throw at you to introduce you to this concept. The lecture problems read, balance the following equations, and then you're given two different equations. You might ask yourself, what types of reactions are these? You'll note that I've got two substances on the left combining to form one substance on the right. So this is indeed a combination reaction. In this particular reaction, I have two substances on the left and two substances on the right. What type of reaction is that? Well, that is a type of reaction that I will talk about in a later lecture. In any event, you don't need to know what type of reaction each of these are in order to balance them. I'll prove that to you by showing you how to balance these on the dot cam. Whenever I balance chemical equations, I always look at both sides of the reaction. Here's the reaction, left side, right side. And then I make a little table of all the elements going left to right that appear on each side. I look left to right, I've got a carbon, and then I've got a bunch of oxygens. So I'll go ahead and do that on the left. On the right, I have the same elements. Then what you have to do is you have to add coefficients, that is numbers, to the left of each of these substances. And you have to do it in whatever way is necessary in order to make the same number of carbons on both sides and the same number of oxygens on both sides total. One thing you cannot do, please, please remember this, you cannot change these subscripts. That two, that two, you can't change them. Any of the ones that are here and are implied, you cannot change those numbers because that would change the chemical identity of those substances. You can only change, take away, or add a coefficients, the numbers uh, to the left of each of these substances. So let's go ahead and look at this. Um, I think one of the challenging things that we're going to see right here is that I've got an even number of oxygens here on the right and I've got an odd number on the left. So I've got two here, and I've got on the, and I'll go ahead and write down two here on the right, and I've got one, two, three here on the left. Three oxygens on the left. Whenever you have that kind of thing where you've got an even and an odd issue, the best way to resolve it is to go ahead and put a two next to uh, whichever the substances has the odd number uh, of atoms. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now what happens is this. I have two multiplied through, which means I've got two carbon atoms and I have two oxygen atoms. Now when I add that, uh, th these two oxygen atoms here, that gives me a total number of oxygen atoms, total, total, total on the left of four. So I, ha I have four total oxygen atoms on the left. Now let's take a look here to the right. If I look to the right, you'll notice I only have one carbon atom. Can I change that? Well, I totally can. If I put a two right there, that two multiplies through, now I have two carbon atoms on the left, but guess what? It changes the number of oxygen atoms. These twos multiply by each other, so the number of oxygen atoms on the right is four. I now have the same number of carbon atoms on both the left and the right sides of the equation, as well as oxygen atoms. And that chemical equation is stoichiometrically balanced. Cha-ching! For this one, we'll follow the same process as we did the last one. Looking at the left side of the equation, going left to right, I've got a carbon atom. I also have hydrogen atom. And I keep moving over here, I've got a chlorine atom. Over here on the right, I've got a carbon atom, and presumably I've got some hydrogens and chlorines. If we look over here, total, total, we can see we've got one carbon atom, we've got four hydrogen atoms, and I've got two chlorine atoms. Okay, how many carbons do I have on the right? Well, I've got one. How many hydrogens? I've got one. And how many chlorines? Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I've got five uh, chlorines. My carbons are balanced, my hydrogens are not. What in the world can I do? Well, I could put a four right there, and now that changes the number of hydrogens to be four. My hydrogens now match. But what about my chlorine atoms? Well, see, that four also changes these number of chlorines because it multiplies through. So now I've got four chlorines here plus four chlorines here, which comes to eight. So I have eight chlorine atoms on the right. I only have two on the left. Can I somehow fix that? That two is the only problem we've got. If I multiplied this by four, that four multiplied by that two, and now I've got indeed eight chlorine atoms, so that a balanced stoichiometric equation. Booyah!